Hi everyone, Six String Supplies. Welcome to our, our first tutorial in a while. Uh, basically, I've had a moved premises uh, and it's been pretty much non stop, which is always good. Um, but I am conscious that it's been a while since our previous video. So, today I'm going to show you how to wire one of these. Now, this is a reverse Telecaster control plate. Um, so, whilst your normal Telecaster control plate will be in your guitar this way, so that'll be your volume and tone and your three-way switch. Uh, a reverse one is quite literally reversed. So when it's in your guitar, your switch is on the other side. There's your volume and there's your tone. Uh, <clears throat> it's quite popular. I mean, I don't. I do very few of these, but it is quite popular uh, for people that I don't know. I guess they want a bit more space for their playing hand, or they knock the switch accidentally, or they knock the controls, or I don't know really why people do it, but. Um, it's different anyway. So I'm going to be showing you how to wire one of those. As always, we're going to be using um, the same components really. Well, exactly the same components. Uh, but we'll be using our Telecaster wiring kit, which you can see just in front of you here. As always, I'll give you a very quick overview of what's involved. Uh, I'll start off just by giving you an overview of the equipment. Um, we've got a, an, an extractor fan there. Uh, the soldering station. On the left there you've got some tinned copper and some lead free silver solder. That is quite literally it. Uh, we've got a couple of tools, obviously some wire cutters and a pokey thing. I like to call it a pokey but it's it's not. It's actually one of those official proper soldering things. It's got a, a brush on one end which I've never used. Um, but that end is what I use the most. Uh, Non-essential equipment, we've got a beer. It is Saturday, it's a couple of hours before the Champions League final and England are getting smashed in the cricket but we'll leave that on anyway it's, it's on silent anyway so the components used it's our, this is our Telecaster wiring kit that's available on the website you don't get the control plate I'm afraid um, so we've got a C CRL spring action switch uh, pretty standard but this is the, the top of the range it's the spring action version uh, which Fender did used to use a lot more in the olden days Nowadays, there is a bit of snake oil about it, but uh, to be honest, for an extra couple of quid, you might as well make the investment. It will last longer than the oak counterpart, which is also a very good switch. Uh, we're using true vintage taper C uh, TVT CTS pots. Um, don't really know how to describe them, really, except that they they come with what they <clears throat> what's called a vintage taper, and all that means is they're actually twenty percent audio as opposed to the the more typical or the more common 10% modern audio taper. So you get a bit more, uh, I guess they're more linear than a standard audio pot, but they're still audio pots, if that doesn't confuse you too much. Uh, a couple of capacitors, 0 0.047 orange drop, standard for a single coil guitar. Uh, you can obviously use a 0 0.022 or a 0 0.033, whatever takes your fancy. Uh, we've got the treble pass capacitor here, AKA or commonly known as the treble bleed. We'll be putting that on the volume control. The switchcraft jack socket, uh, quite simply the best. Uh, I know there's a new jack doing the rounds that a lot of people have been talking about. The pure tone jack, which has an extra couple of, uh, I don't know what you call them really, sleeves or leaves, just to make a supposedly more secure connection. Um, I'd never not, I've never not used the switchcraft to be honest, and some vintage style pushback cloth wire, yellow and black. The kit comes with cream and black, but if you want yellow, just specify should you decide to order one day. Okay, now the easiest way to do this is obviously the beauty of working on a Fender style, it doesn't matter if it's a Strat or a Tele, you can actually do the wiring inside the control plate without having to dismantle everything, unlike on a Les Paul, unfortunately. So we're gonna assemble these components into this very rustic old control plate, which I'm just literally using as a template, and then we'll wire it on from there. Okay, so everything's assembled, as you can see, it's exactly the same uh, as you would for a normal Telecaster. So here's your switch, your, your three-way blade switch, and your two pots. Now on a classic three-way, this would be our volume and this would be our tone, but of course it's a reverse setup. So this is now gonna be our volume control, and this is gonna be our tone control here with the capacitor. So uh, if you watch enough of our videos, you know that we like to start off with a bit of tinning and grounding. So uh, as you should know by now, on your volume control, 
you need to always ground this terminal here, it's the most outer one or the left hand one there. So this is your input, the middle one is the output, and the third one on your volume control we're going to make it redundant. So we're just going to do a bit of tinning there, so same as always really, uh, I like to spend a couple of minutes following your wiring diagram and just tinning everywhere that's going to need a connection later on. So when you're doing these little eyelets, if you hold your soldering iron behind it and just flow it on from the other side. Now because we're going to be grounding this one, we can just completely fill it. The output on the volume, just draw around the circle like that. The heat transferred from your soldering tip means or will allow you to literally draw a circle without actually having to touch the soldering tip with your soldering solder wire, whatever you call it. On your tone control, it's going to be tinning this one and the middle which is where the capacitor is going to be going. This one here on the right will be redundant. Um, it's up to you, you can either snip it off, a lot of people do, or just leave it as it is. Now on the switch, this is actually we're going to be doing it the same way you would do on a classic telecaster. So on a, the standard setup, you have a, a continuous wire, or I have a continuous wire. I know other people like to use a couple of wires. So connecting this terminal to this terminal, then diagonally across, and then to this one, and then that will go into the volume. We're doing a reverse setup, so whilst it's essentially the same, we're going to do it backwards. So we're going to have a wire connecting this terminal to this terminal, then jumping across to the other side, finishing here, and then we're going to wrap that wire into the volume input here. So you take your cloth wire, whatever colour, uh, I'm going to use a bit of yellow for this. Snip it to length. There you go, we're going to push this cloth back, I'd say a couple of inches. Just like that. Tin the, tin the terminals on the switch, so if I turn it this way, there you go, you'll get a better view. Just a, a very light coating. You don't really want to fill it, but equally it doesn't matter if you do. All good. Okay, so you've got your cloth wire, you've pulled it back uh, good maybe a bit more, a couple of inches or so. If you go over, you can always push it back down. So like I say, we're gonna have a wire that connects, a continuous single wire that will connect these two. Then we're going diagonally opposite and then to the left. So these four terminals will all be connected together. So we'll just need to solder that in place. Depending on what soldering uh, iron you're using, depending on what solder you're using, um, mine's a temperature adjustable, it's a HACO or HACO, however you call it. Uh, it's set to 375, which is potentially a little bit low. My solder is, um, it's got no lead in it, silver solder. So it generally requires a little bit more heat to flow. Just hold it down while you remove your soldering iron. Okay, and then we're just going to continue with that wire across, then diagonally, and then left again. 
it's the same again. As you've already tinned these terminals, or you should tin these terminals, it doesn't actually take much to make a connection, so flow your solder in. Just hold it in place while you take the soldering iron off. All good. Then you need to bend it across to the the lug that's diagonally opposite. Just like that. So we soldered these two in, we're gonna then solder it to this one and then finally to the terminal next to it. Do the final one on the switch there. Sorted. Right, so that's your switch done. Now, if you can, as you can see here, and I get a little bit pedantic about this cloth wire. Even if you cut it with really, really sharp scissors or proper wire cutters, the cloth wire does tend, the cloth itself does start to tend to fray at the end. So what I'll tend to do with that is to use a little bit of rubber tubing, just to cover the end of it. And then use uh, either a cigarette lighter or a heat gun, just to shrink it down in place. <clears throat> I finally bought a heat gun a few weeks ago. So I'm just going to shrink that down. It's really hot. <clears throat> Gets up to about 370 degrees. Um, I've actually burnt more things than I've managed to successfully shrink. Right then. So that's the switch done. Next we're going to connect this to the input wire, uh, the input terminal of the volume, which is this one here. And then we'll start connecting up the, the tone controls. So now we need to connect the switch to the volume and tone controls. And uh, I'm just going to show you what I've done here. So the wire from the switch there, I've tucked, it doesn't matter which way you do it, but I've tucked it around the side of the pot there, because that yellow wire is going to get connected to the input terminal here of the volume control and we're also going to have a wire connecting the a separate wire excuse me coming from the same terminal there the input of the volume to the lug directly opposite 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 of the tone control so as always we're just going to push that cloth back a little bit we're going to squeeze it in to the terminal Technically you should tin the wires because uh, it's stranded core uh, so if you tin the wires it's, it's a bit easier. I do 90% of the time, it depends on which application. In this case I'm not going to bother because I have already tinned the terminal. So just fill the eyelet with solder, make sure it flows all over the wires. Just like that. So that is your switch now connected to the volume control. And like I say, we're just going to have a separate wire connecting, <clears throat> coming from the same terminal to the the lug directly opposite on the tone control. And that is <clears throat> pretty much your tone and volume controls complete. So we're just going to heat up that terminal again that you've just filled squeeze in your second wire 
all good. Let it all cool naturally, don't blow on it. That's actually a tiny bit too long, I'm just going to give that a quick snip. Push the cloth back. And again, just squeeze it into the the terminal of the tone control and we're going to solder that in place. Sorted. So essentially, if you take out your multimeter, which I'll do, your tone and volume controls are now all connected to your switch. I've got this set onto continuity, so just to show you that. This terminal here, the switch, should, because we use a continuous wire going all the way, from the end of the switch to the volume control and then to the tone control if we tap the tone control and then the end of the switch there you go it's all connected right then as i said at the beginning of the video we need to ground this lug here we do a separate video on how to ground lugs the, there's two ways of doing it <laughs> it turns out that video is not too popular but um the way I always do it is just to fill the eyelet with solder as we've done at the beginning and then I like to ground it to the back of the pot this way. Uh, the easier way I suppose, although I find this way easier, the easier way is to put a, a bit of wire through the eyelet and connect it to the back of the pot and it does exactly the same thing. Right then. Next we're going to put in the capacitor, so as I said with our wiring kit you get one of these, it's a 0.047 orange drop and your capacitor goes on your tone control obviously, so you're going to have one end going into the middle here, the middle terminal, and the other end is going to be grounded to the back of the pot or the side of the pot, whatever you find easier. So I'm just going to trim it a wee bit. Uh, we'll do that once. Uh, use a little bit of rubber tubing just on that one terminal that's going to be going to the that one lead even that's going to be going to the the eyelet of the tone control because you do not want it to come into contact with the pot itself. Okay, so something like that. I've cut one end shorter than the other. And I need to make it a bit shorter now. Bloody hell. That'll do. So keep one end soldered into the middle terminal. Now these capacitors, the majority of capacitors you get in a guitar are not polarised so you can put them in either way, it does not matter at all. So that's nicely in there. And then this one we're going to ground to the pot casing <coughs> on the top. So just before, if I move that in the way again, we're just going to put down a small puddle of solder on the pot just to make it a bit easier. sorted. A 
and then just ground it down in place. Okay, so that's my tone controls done. Now we're just going to put in the jack socket and the treble blade and then we are pretty much done. Right, so all jacks are the same in the sense that you've got two, two terminals here. This is a Switchcraft and the Switchcraft logo is actually engraved. I say logo, it just says Switchcraft. It's probably not their logo. It's engraved there on the sleeve. Uh, so this inner sleeve here, the inner ring, that's the ground terminal. And the outer one here is the hot or the live. Uh, the easiest way to do this uh, is to make the physical connection first before you actually um, solder it in place. So by the physical I mean wrapping it, actually feeding it through and then wrapping it round. But we're going to start off just by tinning the terminals as usual. Just makes it a bit easier. So just uh, <laughs> turn your soldering iron on as mine was turned off. Tin the tip. Right then, so I'm just gonna. I normally do this in a little template and have it upright, uh, but for the sake of time, again, just draw around the circle. You don't want to fill it by any means because it's a nightmare to feed the wire through if you've filled the hole. So uh, just a tiny amount, just on the rim. There we go. Okay, so for the physical connection, as I say, feed the wire through and then bend it back over itself. Now, a lot of people don't like doing this because should you come to need to change your jack in the future, it's all right falafel to get it out. Falafel. Faffle. Get my words out. But for the sake of argument, we're just going to bend it through and then we're going to solder it in place. Uh, same again. Just let that cool naturally. Push the cloth back down. Now this is where if you're using rubber tubing, this is 3.5 millimeter. Uh, it's very useful just to feed it down the wire. Cover the terminal like that, cover the whole connection and just shrink that down. <clears throat> just takes a couple of seconds on the lower heat setting normal or turbo and then do exactly the same with the ground so in this case I'm using black wire I might as well keep it continuous feed it through and bend it over itself and then you've actually got the physical connection as well as soldering it in place. Let it cool. Push the cloth back down and again we'll just cover that with a bit of rubber tubing. Push that all the way down and then shrink that as well. There you go, so that's your jack. I'm just going to put a tiny bit more tubing. The tubing is completely optional by the way, I, I just do it out of habit but there is no reason to do it really. Except if you're using a bit of copper shielding tape, for example, inside the jack cavity, and these uncovered 
or unprotected uh, connections come into contact. If this yellow one here gets comes into contact with the copper, you're going to have a short, uh, which you don't want, obviously. And then I'm just going to feed another bit down both wires, just like that. And just shrink that down. Okay, sorry, just went out of focus. There's your jack. So we're now going to connect this to the main circuit. So in your main circuit here, the middle terminal here, which is also the output terminal of the volume control, is where we're going to put the yellow wire. And the black one, we're going to ground to uh, ground it basically, so we can put that onto the pot casing or wherever you fancy. I'm going to put it just here on the sides of the tone control. So we'll be bending it around like this. Just like that. So yellow is going to the middle there, uh, at the top of the screen if you can see it. And the black's going to be grounded to the pot there. And that's pretty much everything done. So I'm just going to do a little twist of the wires together. Again, you don't need to, you can just use some rubber tubing. But actually, if you do twist the wires together, uh, this helps to minimise the effect of shielding. Uh, not by much, to be honest. It's not going to make a massive difference, but every little helps. So we're going to push that cloth back. Feed that to the output of the volume control, which is the middle one. And then solder that into place. Just like that. And as I say, we're going to ground the jack to the pot. So that black wire is just going to be soldered onto the edge there. Now when you're soldering onto the back of the pots, this is when I will always tin the wire as well as the pot casing. Because pots need a bit more heat, a bit more encouragement for the connection to be made. So just hold your soldering iron on the back just to heat up the area a little bit. Flow in some solder. just like that. Uh, we're going to tin the wire and then we're going to ground the wire to the pot. Now because you've tinned both the wire and the pot, it doesn't take much, it just takes a bit of heat for all the solder to reflow. Add in a bit more solder if you need, as I've just done, and let it cool naturally. Right then, that's the that's the harness done pretty much. Uh, there's a couple of optional things which you need to do, or you don't need to do as they're optional. Uh, that one would be I mean, I tend to, I always do it actually, and I haven't done it in this video, uh, just to save a bit of time, but you want to ground the two pots together. You can use it just by using some tinned copper or a bit of cloth wire, just having a wire between the two. Now, you don't need it because the template itself is metal. Normally, the control plate is always metal. If you're using a wooden one or a plastic one, God forbid, then you will need the, the wire connecting the two pots, but if you're not, you don't need it. 
and obviously we've got the travel bleed here, the travel pass, which does come with the wiring kit. Um, should you decide to use this, it will go over the input and the output of the volume control. So you just solder each terminal in like that, and that will give you uh, helps reduce the trouble loss as you roll back the volume. Again, it's it is quite popular to have the trouble pass on the Telecaster. Uh, other people hate it, so it's all down to personal choice. If you do want to try it, it's very easy to, to do yourself. And if you decide you don't like it, it's just as easy to take it out again. Uh, right then, so in terms of your pickups, your pickups go exactly as they would do on a normal Telecaster. So this terminal here, and this terminal here for your pickups. You ground your pickups as usual to the back of one of the pots, uh, whichever is easiest, and your main ground from the bridge, again, Stick to the stick to the back of the volume pot or whichever pot's got more space for you. So thanks very much for watching guys. If you've got any questions, requests or comments, please don't hesitate to get in touch. Uh, either subscribe to our channel uh, or send us an email info at sixstringsupplies.co.uk or hell, send me a message on Facebook. Whatever.